China just built an enormous solar farm on the ocean. When I say enormous, I mean this thing is astronomical. It can actually power 2.6 million. 2.6 million, pe million people's electricity needs. Now, it might seem a bit weird, though. I mean, the amount of effort you've got to go to to build a solar farm on the ocean, a solar farm on 1,223 hectares of ocean. Well, I mean, why, why would you do this instead of just putting it on land? It seems like a lot more work. Well, there's a few reasons. One of them you might not be aware of, but solar panels actually are more efficient when they sit on top of water, not, not right on top, but just above the water. It actually helps to cool them down and solar panels, when they're a bit cooler, not too hot, they're actually more efficient. Here are the details, though, on the world's largest offshore solar farm. It's, um, it's quite an amazing project. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. If you can click on the link in the description to become a YouTube member, that would be amazing because that would help me to continue bringing you these videos. China has commissioned the world's largest open sea offshore solar plant. This is literally in the open sea. It's not, a, it's not an estuary or anything like that. It's not in a river. It's in the ocean. It's a one gigawatt installation and it's now online. It's off the coast of Dongying in Shandong province. And it's quite amazing because you might think to yourself, well, what about waves? What about storms? What about, what even if it snows? Sometimes it can snow over the ocean. Well, it's been built to withstand all of that, which is remarkable. Developed by Guohao Investment, a unit of China Energy Investment Corp, a state-owned energy firm, the offshore solar farm achieved full capacity grid connection in late December of 2025. Located around five miles from shore, so quite a long way. It would be very difficult to see it from shore, in fact. This installation spans 1,223 hectares of shallow coastal waters with depths ranging from 3.2 to 13.1 feet, which is one to four meters. So the ocean beneath these solar panels is not very deep. Well, I guess four meters is kind of deep, isn't it? But um, really not that deep for, for almost all of it. The farm is the first gigawatt scale fixed pile offshore solar project over ever completed anywhere. And it features a total of 2,934 platforms anchored by offshore steel truss structures. Now you'd think, right, these offshore steel structures would rust. And that's kind of a question that, that came to my mind anyway when I saw this. According to CHN Energy, the project's fixed pile design is engineered to withstand waves, tides, strong winds, and even seasonal sea ice. It is supported by 11,736 steel piles, which is just an amazing number. This not only withstands a strong gale of force 11 and winter ice conditions, but also reduces steel usage by around 10%, providing valuable experience for future offshore wind farms, said the company that built this project. Each of the platforms on the solar panels on the project measures around 196 feet, which is 60 meters in length, and 114 feet, 35 meters in width. Additionally, the project marks the nation's first use of 66 kilovolt offshore cable, which is very, very high powered, particularly considering it's cable that goes through water. This cable is combined with an onshore cable for high capacity, long distance solar power transmission. The massive farm uses more than 2.3 million high power, 710 watt bifacial solar panels mounted at a 15 degree tilt, just slightly diagonally. Its offshore location, it improves performance with the cooler air and reflected sunlight actually increasing power generation and actually helping to cool down the water underneath it, which is likely to actually bring more fish. So that's actually part of the design, getting fish here, because they've integrated fishing platforms and a whole fish farm as part of this entire structure. The structure features a four pile foundation plus solar platform with panels tilted at precisely 15 degrees. But according to project data, they say 
that by tilting the panels like this and putting them in the position they're in above the ocean, efficiency of the panels improves by 5 to 15% versus an onshore solar plant. The custom subsea cable network carries power generated by these panels to land, and an onshore substation then steps the power up to 220 kilovolt. However, there is a big battery connected to these solar panels. There's a 100 megawatt slash 200 megawatt hour energy storage system. And this, of course, improves grid stability. It means that during the day when people don't really need all that much power between, say, 11 and about 3 p.m., excess solar power will be created that the grid is probably not going to use. And then what they do is all that power, that excess power, goes straight into that battery and the battery puts out, you know, releases that power between 6, approximately 6 to 9 p.m. in the evenings. Now, the company says this, the solar farm's combined transmission and storage design increases effective capacity by around 20%. It also cuts unit costs by about 15%. And once fully operational, the farm will generate around 1.78 terawatt hours or a huge amount of power every year. It's enough for approximately 2.67 million urban residents in China. Now, this is actually equivalent to saving around 504,000 tonnes of standard coal and reducing carbon dioxide emissions by 1.35 million tonnes. But there's another benefit here, right? The project utilises an integrated fishing and solar development model, combining fish farming with PV power generation to enhance the utilisation of the marine area. So it's believed that this, these kinds of facilities, right, having all these poles in the water becomes a marine environment, becomes like artificial reefs. And because there's thousands of these poles in the water, there's going to be thousands of artificial reefs, which will increase the amount of marine life, also reducing the temperature of the water, and therefore it will provide an additional benefit. So you can see here one, some of the reasons why they've done this offshore. But there's other reasons as well. I mean, in China, there is 1.35 billion people and not a lot of land near cities where you know you can install these massive solar installations but there's plenty of ocean and much of it i mean obviously almost all of it is not really being used for anything so this makes a lot of sense it's good for marine life it's great for humans and it works for everyone i think it's absolutely brilliant when i first saw this story i thought this sounds kind of wacky but actually it's phenomenal guys let me know what your thoughts are in the comments Thanks for watching. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.